Hi everybody, Hi Ho Silver, sitting in the bunker deep in the woods of the Pacific Northwest. Well, today is Bunker Bullion Part 3, The Anatomy of the Poor. I'm going to spend quite a bit of time talking about how I'm doing what I'm doing. In this video, you will see me using wood as a base underneath the kiln. This can burn. I'm solving this problem with water. You can use other solutions like not using wood under your kiln. Well, there you see it, the birth of the bunker button, another cool product. I'm really going to continue exploring how to best create these extreme pore lines and ripples. And that's what I want bunker bullion products to look like. So in this video, um, I'm shooting all of today's footage here, uh, actually the day after my very first pour, but I'm doing it from a different setup at the home base. It's important that before you do this, you get some decent safety gear. These uh, goggles here are pretty cool. They're by that guy Holmes who's got the TV show. Uh, pretty good stuff. And then also you need some good gloves. These are great. They fit real nice on the hand and uh, really handy. They're touchscreen sensitive so I can operate my iPad. So the footage we'll see today is again using the quick kiln kit, pretty cool little setup, and uh, some experimenting I'm doing to create a unique look for the Bunker Bullion products. A lot of it has to do with the map torch. I've also added the use of the quenching pool here, cools the silver down real quick, and it uh, also can help kind of shock some of the impurities off of the product. There's quite a bit of downtime when you're pouring silver, when you're remelting and reheating things, so you should have some things to do. I've been exploring different ways to get different finishes on the silver. So you know what my goal is, those extreme pour lines, and I think maybe some um, different shapes of, of poured product too. I'm uh, quenching each one and kind of taking a look at this one right here is a little too boring so I'm going to try different um, distances with the map torch and try aiming it at different spots. You see here I'm aiming at the left side and I've got it at full uh, full pressure it's a good pour and it's creating that side to side pour line and that spot right there in the middle, that's the hot spot and it's the last to cool. I can place that little dimple anywhere on the bar I want just by aiming the torch. I'm going to mix in some tips each video as we go, just kind of randomly. I'm offsetting the lid to this quick kiln here. That helps create a barrier between the oxygen in the atmosphere and the melt. In the next episode, I'll also include some tips and tricks on how to hold the different tongs and some of the better techniques for getting a good safe bore. Well, the silver is reheated, and I'm just going to go through a series of slow-mo. Here you can see I'm trying to, with that torch, create that side-to-side -side motion. If it's too hot, um, the motion kind of settles too much before it cools, and you get more of a real fine pour line like you have here. Um, these particular bars are very small. You can see here I'm going more side-to-side -side motion and it cools very quickly. 
It's hard to create real exciting pour lines on the smaller ones. That one there is about a half ounce and I was able to with that. So just more experimenting, getting different things. You can see how it's cooling here on the hot spot to the right. Well, while we remelt, let me talk about these crucibles here. I purposefully pushed this first crucible um, to its limit. I wanted to find out what that limit was. And I also wanted to experiment uh, with seeing how many pours I could get. I got about 40 pours out of this, or 40 melts. You see, I did burn a hole there. Um, this is what causes those grooves here. I did all my first pours on purpose with full flame. Um, this is how I'm doing this second day of pouring. As close to this setup as I can, maybe a quarter inch of that blue flame glowing in there. It melts it a little bit slower, but it uh, is giving me many more pours out of the crucible. Well, let's get back to it. I'm balancing the crucible on the edge there, which gives me a little more control over how and where the pour goes. You see here in this uh, slow-mo again of the bunker button prototype, I'm able to really create a really cool current and uh, I've got the temperature set just about right for it to cool in an interesting way. This was the first real big success I had by aiming the uh, hot spot at various places. Super cool how the cooling happened on this. So here in these next few pours, it's kind of the same thing, experimenting with um, the motion of the silver as it cools. You can also see I still have the issues with those little bits of impurities there. I can usually remove those with a little polishing, but I'm still working that through. When I stop the pour short, um, I do like it because I get different shapes and I also get a real pure top side of the, the silver piece. These smaller buttons, um, they tend to cool with some finer pour lines. Well, while I solve those impurities issues, I'm also experimenting with ways to use the last bits as I'm pouring short each time, I'm actually refining, and that leaves in these final bits a kind of a cool opportunity. You can see here, there it is, the birth of the bunker loaf. I actually love it, the texture. It looks just like a loaf of bread. Got the cooked top side, awesome. I hope you're enjoying the journey here. If you are, or even if you're not, take a minute, go down and click share. Let's um, get as many people seeing um, these efforts as possible. I hope you find them useful and beautiful. Here's uh, kind of a sampling of what's left over from all the remelting in the first weekend. I've got the looks I'm after. Now I'm just going to continue perfecting the process. Thanks for watching, everybody. And thanks to these safety goggles, I'll see you again.